Mr. Khan. Now, come to the cafe pass by this gate. Again. Rest. <laughs> Bird has escaped, sir. I said rest, Mr. Tupama. Words. Words, Mr. Maris. When was a philosopher prepared to fight for anything? I'm paid to teach, not to act like a barbarian. But I must say, you make the arena most enticing. The Golden Age of Television presents James Mason in A Sword for Marius. Come, come, gentlemen. Don't just stand there. Move, move. Briskly, briskly. Wait, wait, monsieur. Well, gentlemen. Are you lost? Uh, uh, philosophy class, sir. Oh, that will be Mr. Marius. Uh, oh, Michel. Michel, come. Did you say Marius? Uh, some of the new boys are seeking philosophy. Uh, will you kindly lead them out of the darkness? Yes, sir. Come on, Max. Let's go to Palmer. A fine man, Mr. Marius. You will enjoy him. I intend to, sir. To the fullest. All of this leading in a general way to Jeremy Bentham's horrendous word, utilitarianism. So you see, gentlemen, you've come all the way to Switzerland to learn about one Englishman's political philosophy from another Englishman. You're quite surrounded. <laughs> Sir, what is this word? Uh, what's your name? Dutch Stöpel, Germany. Mm. It means, Mr. Stöpel, government of greatest number for the greatest good. It seems sort of obvious, Mr. Marius. I mean, it's just ordinary democracy, isn't it? Well, the idea of democracy may be very ordinary in the United States, Mr. Mitchell, but it's not very obvious. I clipped some recent reports from the newspapers. Senor Marius? Your name, please. Ramon de Parma, sir. De Parma. I believe you know my country. Proceed, Mr. De Parma. I think, sir, that your democracy is a religion of frightened people. Why do you say that, Mr. Mitchell? Well, sir, since this old man's a dictator, I guess that makes him a big expert. My father rules because he's strong. Only those who are strong enough to impose their will are fit to rule. Is this not the natural law, Mr. Nars? It's a temporary fact, but scarcely a law. Perhaps you would be good enough to disprove it, sir, in your wisdom. In due time, in this very classroom, we should do our best to reduce all dictatorships to rubble. <laughs> <laughs> sir, with your permission, it becomes late. We have to meet the fencing instructor. Yes, of course. Class is dismissed. I hope the fencing master won't be offended. How does it work? Ah, it was the same my first time. Yeah, well, my old man isn't spending dough so I can listen to you sound off in class. But I have a disgust for weakness. And your Mr. Marius makes me very ill. Okay, only argue with him on your own time. But we have free speeches. No? Well, I speak as I please. All as I please. You must remember that. Gentlemen, you restrain your enthusiasm. We will now endeavor to learn the art of the sword. Oh, our gentle philosopher is also the fencing master. A logical extension, Mr. De Palma. Fencing, like philosophy, is a way of life in which we're perennial students. The final answer is never quite given. In line, please, gentlemen. The sword has been described as the mirror of the soul. Well, young gentlemen, we shall here try to look into each other's souls and become artists. We shall search out discipline, wisdom, strength, precision, courage, and beauty. First, the grip. Let me give you the advice of La Fougere. You hold the blade as you would a captive bird. You don't want it to escape, but you don't want to crush it. Likely. Point up with it. I'm up like that. It's not a shillelagh. Hand up a little. That's better. Good, good. Oh, no, the 
wrist, palm up like that. His fingers, finger and thumb. That's your own jacket, Mr. De Palma? Your permission, sir? It's very good. You had forgotten, Mr. Marius, that you were my first instructor? So I was. I've studied much since then. Perhaps you'd like to demonstrate a few Paris for your friends. Delighted. Step up. Rest. The classic eight positions for defense, which you will learn painfully hmm, and precisely. On guard. Extend the arm. Lunge. Mm -hmm. Paddy card, repulse straight. Sub team. Up, up. Tears. Good. Sick con. Now, contra the card and repulse by disengage. Again. Rest. Oh, your captive bird has escaped, sir. I said rest, Mr. Palmer. Forgive me for misunderstanding. Marius, I dropped yeah. his sword, though you don't disarm him so easily. Oh, this guard is weak. Look, do you mind? I'm trying to work. Of course, you must study very hard, Major. Okay, I'm no genius. But I've had Mr. Marius for a few courses around here. How amusing. Yes, he's, he's a very funny guy. He likes books and flowers. And he doesn't make trouble for anybody. Why are you giving him a needle? He was a, an acquaintance of my father. He wouldn't spit on your father. May I? I suppose you get out of here. Oh, you know so much about Mr. Marys. Doesn't he object to his daughter wandering about a man's school? I wouldn't know. Such a vulnerable man, your friend. Very vulnerable. Now, yeah. don't, don't move a piece. Okay? Again. Now, yeah. Okay? All right. Time for the day, gentlemen. Yeah. I can understand how I am. Yes. Without moving the piece. <laughs> Time you did live in the country. It's impossible. But I will remember you were <laughs> a sticky child, you know. <laughs> hmm? I don't believe it. My father would have told me. Then he lied to you. I'm sure he hasn't. Just never mentioned it. Besides, the whole thing's fantastic. Make it sound as if we had some sort of shadowy childhood romance. Ah. Much too young <laughs> and much to think. <laughs> but, but you're very beautiful now. And we've met again, and that's the most important thing of all. No, no. Hello, Father. I thought you had a meeting. No, I put it off. I thought I'd work over the flower beds today. I see you've met Mr. De Palma. I was just uh, explaining, you don't know, that we have shared a portion of our lives. You know, it's forbidden to wear your fencing costume outside the gymnasium. Oh, is it now? Again, I beg your forgiveness, Mr. Marius. You weren't very nice to him. He's rather an aggressive sort. Did he bother you? No, I enjoy talking to him. He's a 
beautiful fencer, isn't he? Hmm. Not bad. Shall we beat our swords into plowshares? I have been considering the concept of human rights. Today, however, let's turn our attention to government by force. In theory or in the world as it exists, Mr. Marius? As a case history in repressive rule, and incidentally, in the origin of some very bad manners, let's take your country, Mr. Palmer. Unfortunately, there are difficulties in such a discussion, because what we choose to call human rights vanished from your country the day your father took power. So we cannot discuss law, because rule by whim and tantrum is not law. We cannot discuss the relationship between the executive and the state, because there is no state. Instead, we have one vast personal farm in which human animals... I will not hear this. You will hear out my argument. I have pride. Pride is an irrational emotion. You should reject it. Sir, gentlemen, we're examining a relationship between a farmer and his beasts, a subject which might more properly be discussed in a class in veterinary science. <laughs> so, unless Mr. De Palma has something further to add, we'll return to our previous subject. I will be pleased to continue the discussion, but let it be in the fencing class with sword. You're making yourself quite ridiculous. My father called you a coward. And you are still a coward. There'll be no more discussion today. The German boy, Max Steppel. Flexible, outstanding in the sciences. Marius? Philosophy, Mr. Marius. Uh, uh, um, he's, he's quite adequate. Mm. Uh, this school is both uh, selective and expensive. He was not brought here to be quite adequate. Uh, David Mitchell. A little difficulty in manipulating ideas. Kind of remove this difficulty. And the exotic Mr. De Palma. Unbearable, but a good mathematician. He's an excellent student. I dare say. Now, what is all this about his wanting to fight a duel? Hardly that. I think all he wants is a fencing match with me. In that case, uh, give it to him. And endeavor to strike him very hard across the backside. There'll be no match. Oh, is he really that good? It's a matter of principle. I can't imagine what, but then you are the philosopher. A cognac? Thank you. I shall bring you their heads to play with. Thank you. But I'm too old for play things. Then you are too serious. I adore my toys. Soon I'll play with them. Against your father. You don't mean with real points. You're very silly. I just want to prove a superiority. He'll beat you. We are young, you and I. Soon I'll we beat the old ones at their own game. Natural, no? No. Go home immediately. Father, I'm not a child anymore. You... I said go home. An hour? Stay with me. for our match, Mr. Marius. If you want an apology for what happened in the classroom, you have it. I have no right to retaliate with personal examples. Your whole life, sir, is words. You must know they are not so easily erased. What do you want from me? I want to give you pain, Mr. Marius. I want to give comfort to my father when, when he feels for an arm that isn't there. I had nothing to do with that. He was shot! Not by me. You deserted him. Not because he was wounded. You were his friend. What is it? What is he talking about? I speak 
speak of the night your father ran away with noble phrases on his lips and left my father to die. It's true. A man of such greatness doesn't die so easily. He remembers you very well. Tomorrow, Mr. Marius. At the fancy class. Thousands of years, he's been quite terrifying. I'm not talking philosophy, Father. I want to know what happened. I want to know what you really are. I had a school there. My mom was one of your students. His father was an army colonel. He was a very remarkable man, eager for knowledge. He used to cry when they talked about what the new ruling clique was doing to his country. I helped him organize a counter-revolution. During the bloodshed that followed, Colonel De Palma was wounded. I carried him into a warehouse. If they found us, I was ready to die with him. But he became feverish and talked a lot. Raved. And I realized that his ambitions were monstrous. That everything that I believed in would become filth in his hands. So I took you, ran out of the country that night. Turned my back on violence forever. That ain't you. His father was the traitor. Not you. It's fair to them. Every horror is fair to them. Come in. Sir? Yes, Mr. Mitchell. Sir, the farmer has sent us a boat. It's a fencing man. He's waiting. Sir, please beat him. Whack the daylights out of him. What would be gained by that? He deserves it. And, well, if you don't, well, your own pride, sir. Would you be good enough to define that word, Mr. Mitchell? It's like honor. And honor, Mr. Mitchell? That's all a man stands for, I suppose. The sum total of a man is his ideas. The custom of trying those ideas by judicial combat perished several centuries ago. You should be in the gymnasium. Yes, sir. There will be a fencing class today. Yes, class as usual. In line, please, gentlemen. Father, please, don't. No, no, no. Today, the theory of the false attack. Mask on, non guard positions. A grip lacks authority, Mr. Sable. The false attack invites the riposte, which is parried and countered. In position, please, Mr. De Palma. My father's son, at your service, sir. You will obey my order, please. You must enforce your order. Or uh, perhaps you would prefer to make a speech, sir. Or to run away again. It is quite... Mr. Marius. You really are a most unpleasant young man. And you are a fool. You think that fencing like politics is a game. You make your little protecting rules. And they are false. Ever since I left your country, Mr. De Palma, I've been convinced that never again would I settle for a brute fight. But you make the arena most enticing.
continue your lesson in the false attack. So. Your eyes betray your intent. Practice. You practice too long, old man. Too many years. And breath, go! to tell you, Professor. This is not by the book. understand that your fencing match got out of hand. Briefly. As a matter of fact, the young man is leaving. You know, I find this whole affair almost as shocking as it is fascinating. I... Young woman, were you not raised to leave when your father has a guest? No, sir. Yes, only... Uh, well, the only point remaining is your reversal of principle. I should be delighted to know why a philosopher decided to fight. Was it pride? No, not pride. I think it's the kind of fundamental dignity that philosophers would always eventually fight for. Pride is something quite different. Is it really? Do you understand that? Oh, yes, sir. Have a look at these new tulip bulbs. They're something quite special. Hmm? I like this one. Join us at the same time next week when the Golden Age of Television presents Operation Spark and Squeeze Play. Next, don't miss the Tony Award-winning show that sent shivers down Broadway's spine. Angela Lensbury and George Hearn make musical mayhem in Sweeney Todd. Next. Next.